what surprises me is Baybeats Festival brings in certain genres that I wouldn't expect them to bring in. It's really truly the one festival we have that is 100% alternative music. The Brain Centre is the programming team. We conceptualise and head the festival. Most of the underground genres are represented. We still hold true to the people that we want to highlight, uh, the, the underground musicians. So anything that's not on uh, radio, not pop, that's uh, what we try to feature in the festival. In terms of finding artists, it's where each programmer's speciality comes in because some of us have uh, better connections with regional producers, festival directors. Some of us have wider reach. Some of us, uh, because of experience, may know more bands locally. I won't be around. Why not? This weekend. Are you okay? No, I'm just kidding. Well, so, well, I, I, just, well, I, I just want to say okay, that because it, on, on Friday, right, it rains. Oh, you. This is months of planning, not just for me, but with the whole team. This year it's about 100 to 200 people who actually are involved. I myself, as a practitioner of sorts also, attending the festival for over 15 years. And then you see the growth of the festival and how much the festival means to you. 23 years down the road, how do we maintain that we stay relevant? with the communities. As part of the marketing like strategy when it comes to the plans, we are always in very close conversation also with our programming buddies. So a lot of the ideas that we come that comes through when we are promoting the festival actually is usually like a spark of um, creativity that comes from suggestions from all the different team members. Uh, gradually along the years we pivoted um, to place more and more presence on social media. What the team has also looked into is to extend that beyond the festival grounds. We also have our digital programs planned and uh, due for release um, usually um, after the festival in a couple of weeks time etc. So to kind of keep the momentum going uh, for people to really continue to get to know our scene, uh, get to be in touch with like other theme music. The digital component of the festival became an essential part of Bay Beats after the pandemic. So we work really closely with programming on this. The full performance recordings take Bay Beats beyond the three days of the festival, giving Bay Beats exposure or profiling it outside of Singapore. They also give the people who have attended the festival a chance to relive the music. Hi, our playlist is on the Spotify homepage. So we find independent cafes that we think, we feel, coincides with uh, what Bay Beats represents. We approach them and many of them are very supportive of this initiative and some of them even came up with um, promotions for Baby Festival Goers. Oh, this one, um, uh, we carefully selected them as part of like a survival kit. So we also noticed that people who received them were very especially excited about Spock. I'll show you. So like, we have our Baby logo and King's logo. Pretty cool. Every year, we will engage a local artist to uh, give Baby a unique look and feel. This year, we are working with uh, Sadiq. Sadiq has produced a, a very nice piece of artwork this year. I would say it brings out a little bit of the psychedelic feel. How do I cope? Just work non-stop! Last year, I was assigned to a, a performance venue, uh, NX Studio. But this year, it's more of uh, the festival village. Uh, it's basically ancillary stuff anything that still requires uh, technical production support. The stage, bottom. This one is already 9 meters. We still haven't solved the 
gambling issue. <laughs> yeah, but if they say we swap the the drop there, then it should be okay, right? Yeah, that one still okay, not too bad. Oh my. Because we are handling like what for this year we're handling about 14 bands. No no no, 14 bands for one venue. 39 bands in total. Yeah. 39. So bands. it's quite a lot. Yeah. Nine. The teamwork between PG and uh, TP should be very tight. The possibilities is not just about whether we can do it or not, but it's also more like, okay, which venue you're going to do? Do you have enough days? Um, do you have enough budget for it? What's your expectation about the whole stage design, um, the whole system? Do we need a lot of manpower? It may sound like we keep questioning programming, but this is what we need to do in order to help them to execute the ideas that they have. It's quite gratifying because when you see like from paper to execution, everything is slowly building up. Tomorrow onwards, we have soundtrack for local bands all the way till late night. International artists, they usually will soundtrack on the day itself because most of the times they are coming only like a day before they are performing. No beer for tonight. I gotta work, man. I didn't know that in Singapore we do have bands or music that made it abroad, you know, like Euro, you know, Wormrod, um, Great Spy Experiment, Subsonic Eye. Subsonic Eye. Yeah. They've made it elsewhere, which, you know, just gives me the, the excitement and the drive to do something similar. We actually initially discussed if we're gonna audition for Beats. Uh, we just thought that we weren't ready yet. So being called up by Beats itself is like an, an immense honour yes. for us. Beats. <laughs> home, home, home ground. Exodus, evolution. Ooh. Passion, 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 passion. 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 <laughs> Thank you, give me one day. Hey, Ryder. Hey, no worry. You rock. What does that mean? Catalyst. <laughs> Within our technical team, we have a lot of musicians and they are also in the scene. When these bands come in, chances are they know these guys, these guys know our crew. had the budding program for almost, I think, 17 years now. Uh, we started in 2007, so we now have budding programs for MCs, we now have budding programs for photographers, we have budding program, program for bands, uh, and then we also have budding program for writers. For us, what we do is like, for example, if a band, like a budding band wants to release a song or whatever, then we try to do our best to, you know, see if we can connect them to like, uh, people in the industry to see if they, they can advise or help them in any way, shape or form. I've been a mentor for the last three babies. A lot of it is kind of meeting the newer bands. The kampong thing that we had amongst all the mentors, it's like, ah, can you come help my band with vocals and lyric writing? That's like, ah, ah, yeah, I don't know anything about guitar pedal, can you come and help my band? We all just kind of ended up switching and swapping and going to di all the different bands, jammings and contributing whatever our expertise was. That was like that was 11, 11 years ago. <laughs> we old. <laughs> we kind of saw the opportunity to just try our luck with Baby Flooding Band. It was a good experience, like we had a lot of great mentors like uh, Dino, Dino, Dino uh, 
uh, Mimi, Abang Suhaimi. Suhaimi. Fun fact, we have not seen each other for quite a while. For quite a while. Wow. It's been so nice. Eh? <laughs> I guess Hide and various programmers have been poking at us to get going again yeah. through our hiatus. When yeah. we came back, it's like it's like nothing changed. Uh. I'm I'm pretty hyped. I'm quite hyped up, quite nervous. First and foremost, uh, the space, the venue. Uh, there's this department called staging, they will, will uh, remove the seats and make sure the space is uh, the right configuration. Lah. Then I will then go to uh, this thing called the array call, because we are using a DMB system here. Yeah. So with that, then you can have a rough idea of how it, it sounds like in the space. But then, of course, you're on site, you have to really like, fine-tune a bit. Lah. And I don't know if I can say this, but I just want to say it. I think King Lai Chi was playing, uh, I was in a mosh pit. Right, so I was. I think I was a bit aggressive, and I was. I, I got. I got like choked, pulled out from uh, by a security guard. Uh. So that's one of the memorable things that happens to me. And maybe. I was with baby since uh, baby's day one. Not study day one. Baby's beginning the one. One thing I can I can say is that the team is very prepared with this. Uh, mission, which is to keep everyone safe and secure. If you don't hear, or you don't see us, I think that's the best. <laughs> we make magic happen in logistics. So yeah, we will book the accommodation for the artists, like the flights, and even the ground transport, and their backstage hospitality. Uh, one of the programmers called us and they were, he was like, um, it was um, 3 o'clock. I was like, hey, um, hi, can, can I get a 13-seater van for our band at 3.30? Then we were like, uh, 3.30, in 30 minutes you want a van? Um, okay, we'll do some magic for you and bam, we give, it, we give it to them. All of us are like doing it together. Hi. Hi, how can I help you? <laughs> so basically, I went to the airport to pick up the artist. And you look great. Oh, also, thank you. Looks excited. <laughs> like, very excited to play. Next few days, I have to go to the hotel, pick them up, and also send them to the venue, and also take care of their like, well-being. Hope you guys have a good show oh, tomorrow. No, hope. We will. You will. We will. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun. And when their show is done, I will just assist them again with whatever I can. The taste of Big Baby is really good, I have to say. It's the first time our festival invites us, so like really honored. Because last year also there was a band that we really liked playing here, like Delta Sleep. And then I was like, I already knew the festival, so when I received the message, I was like, ooh, cool, so let's do it. And um, here we are. Basically, uh, we run uh, the front of house operations for uh, any event or festival that we have here in Esplanade. So we are in charge of admissions, uh, managing our ushers as well, and to ensure that patrons have a smooth experience. The backdrop area is new. Something we set up uh, this year, we hope that can give the audiences um, more organized entry into the venues to enjoy the performance. The fact that BBS has always been like a free festival, I think that's a very enticing sort of like recognizing factor for BBs and, and that's why the crowds are always so big and that's been quite consistent since like it started. I take everything that I've experienced before, everything that I've seen in the past from how audiences enjoyed the festival, how the vibe was, the, the her atmosphere is and take into consideration how can we bring that back every year. This would be our 10th year. Oh, 
Is this first? first one? It's first one. Last year we left him at home. We like mark it in our calendar. Yeah, we mark it Because we know it's okay. around this time. Oh, when is baby this year? Yeah. I mean, we saw a backdrop there, so maybe a baby drop would be cool. <laughs> Great festival overall. See you next year. Last time we used to say must catch the last bus, so this one uh, anyone needs to catch the last bus or last train. <laughs>